Hello. Good day. Hello. Wine o'clock. Coffee moaning in wine o'clock trousers. That's the sound of wine, I think. A wine bottle thing. It's a little port. Oh, a little port. A little I mean, port. Little early port. A little port. How are we all? Um, how is everyone? Obviously, you've seen that we've got a slightly different title. Well, you, you know, the, the news. The news is pretty shamefully consistent at the moment, which is uh, genocidal action uh, by Israel uh, met with zero international opposition, criticism or restraint. And so... I would go so far as to say they're encouraging it. <laughs> Fanning well, Many the Western leaders are encouraging it, especially Mr Biden. Shame on them. Shame on them. Shame on their conscience. So, I mean, it, it is shocking. So, um, so it, you know, and the problem here, just just quickly about all of that before we kind of we don't go go off on one for, for too long, is there is a desire to um, create so much, I think, frustration, fury, and um, you know, annoyance in anyone who is anti-Israel, so that you can be provoked and pushed into a position... Anti-Israeli government. Anti-Israeli government, so that you can be provoked and pushed into a position that they feel they can somehow say you're, you're anti-Semitic or something like that. This is just, this is a lunacy. We are dealing with the lowest level of intellectual debate, thought or inquiry I have ever humanly known possible since, I hate to say it, since World War II. There's Simple no debate, that. we can't debate it. But anyway, anyway, moving on. The tragic news, I, it, I was late back, I was struggling to get to sleep, and this, this news landed literally at uh, 1.45 last night. I, I, I was so shocked to see mm. the passing of Matthew Perry. It's funny, though, because why would we be shocked? Yeah. You know, he's, he's, yeah. he's been, he was so open and so powerful in the way that he got the message of addiction and the, the horrific impact that it has mm. on, the, on the body, especially. Um, and so, you know, I mean, it was, when did they do the reunion tour? Was it last year or the year well, before? Well, they did a reunion show. It was longer than, I, th I think it was, I think it was 2021. I mean, I think, was it was it? I think it was in lockdown. And that's really when we first heard just how bad the mm. physical aspect of his addiction had been, hadn't it? Mm. So, yeah, just so damn sad. I think um, I think there's an interesting twenty. It was twenty twenty one. I think there's an interesting kind of um, almost uh, echo here. A lot of we're ending up talking a lot about the mainstream media, and I think what's interesting about people like Matthew Perry um, uh, is that the mainstream media is responsible for promoting a very specific image of them. Mm. And I think if I think of Matthew Perry before last night, if I, if you were to say to me, "What do you think of Matthew Perry?" I, I felt I felt that he was someone who was not taken seriously, who was marginalised really? by the press marginalised that there was a sort of appetite to see, you know, he was the one that went off the rocks. There was a sort the of... Rails. There was a... Off the rocks, yeah, off the rocks, <laughs> yeah. Got, uh, there was a sort of, you know, that classic tabloid prurient interest in it going wrong or how did it go wrong or the extent to which it, you know... That, but if for some reason there's this belief and there is this appetite for people who have everything and then they sort of potentially have nothing, isn't there? Um, and so I, I just felt... Last night I was struck by just how lonely he seemed and appeared when you go through his Instagram and you look at his later days. And the thing is, we were talking about, um, you know, what bits of friends should we talk about and what the happiest memories. And then actually we came across this interview that he'd given and it was actually very, very sad and very powerful. He said, I know when I die, everything will be about friends, friends, friends. And I know it's an impossible dream for me to have, but I would like that to go right to the bottom of the list. And what I would like people to talk about Hi, is what I did to aid others with sobriety and about the disease mm. of addiction. He believed passionately that he had an allergy to alcohol, didn't he? Mm. He um, famously had a massive row with that's what was that? Is that horrible chap? Somebody Hitchens. He was oh, saying, which one, Peter or Christopher? He's got this two. Peter, there's one who's alive now, and there's the one who's. And, and it was basically about um, 
you know, he'd say, oh, well, you know, anyone who's an addict, you just put it down, don't touch it, don't drink it. And he had this really impassioned yeah. argument with him about mm. how it's just not that simple. He said, you know, if the thought of alcohol goes into my head, there is nothing I can do. Mm. He went to 15 different rehabs, mm. 15. He tried so, so hard, didn't he, mm. to get sober to, and did stay sober you know, long periods of time and he was sober, wasn't he? But Mark was just listening to an interview. Well, and uh, Mum... No, no, an Instagram post. Mum, you're going to sort of... Well, I'm going to say love, because we're not talking about something that's, you know, his diet. But th this connection, I think you'll find interesting. He was apparently very good friends with Hank Azaria, who is one of the voiceover artists for uh, The Simpsons. Um, he was recently in The Idol. He often pops up in kind of, you know, mainstream kind of really indie kind of films. He's a fantastic actor. He's a great comic actor. He, he's just wonderful. Anyway... Apparently, Matthew Perry got him into AA. 17 years ago, he took Matthew, yeah, Matthew Perry took Hank Azaria for a year to every AA meeting. And this is what Matthew Perry wanted people mm. to talk about when he died. Of what, he said, I want people to talk about... And he was in Friends, Hank Azaria. The power of people getting sober and helping other people to get sober. Mm. So mm. No, no, and, and just keeping them sober. And if you just go to Hank Azaria's uh, Instagram account and listen to his incredibly moving... So moving. Tribute, remembrance, uh, sort of, you know, uh, dedication to uh, to Matthew Perry and the fact that he got him sober. It's that terrible thing where, and I, I would say the same of myself in terms of, you know, not doing, you know, every person who's trying to struggle with their recovery isn't making all the right steps all the right time. And I'll tell you exactly why that is. Because absolutely no one living their life as, a, as an addict, non-addict, recovering or not recovering, is making all the right choices at the right time. It doesn't happen. There isn't a perfect route. And everyone is, you know, failing in this area or not doing this in that area, not doing that. And what was interesting oh, about Hank Azaria... Saw, saw Matthew and Hank in that play in London. That was about sobriety, wasn't it? Because wow. I heard the director talking about him wow. today. Oh, lucky you. But, what, but just what he was saying was clearly he was indicating that, that whilst he helped, was crucial in helping Hank Azaria and many others to get sober, he was in and out of sobriety a lot more than perhaps even we necessarily knew. Um, and I think an, an awful lot of speculation, and it's really, I, again, it's really frustrating that, you know, it's like, what's the toxicology report? What's the, you know, what's the coroner's report going to be? What's the autopsy? All this kind of, what was there when they found him and all this kind of stuff? What was there, for sure, that they do know was pulmonary, uh, pulmonary disease m medicine, anti-anxiety tablets, and um, anti-depression tablets, is that right? Yeah. Mm. Um, which, just those three things made mm. me feel so heartbroken. Somebody <laughs> just said that it was so lovely of him to help other people when he was suffering. Well, that mm. is the very nature of recovery. Recovery mm. is, is, you know, it, being of service. It's funny because some of the papers said, you know, he'd been to 6,000 AA meetings. Well... AA yeah. is a medication that goes on for the rest of your life. But basically. it's like, it's a, and it's a daily thing. Yeah. It's a da There's also this strange and, and, thing. And that... the part of sharing and helping others is what helps keep that person sober. I mean, Elton John famously reaches out, doesn't he, to mm. every sort of famous person, it seems, mm. and helps them when they're struggling with addiction. Mm. Because ultimately that also helps him stay sober. Yeah, I mean, I find it really useful when I do those kind of mental health or addiction. <laughs> That was big. Mm -hmm. uh, mental health or addiction posts on Instagram. For me, that's like sharing. It's like a chair, it's like a share, and the people share back. And then it's about finding connections, finding similarities. And it just sounds, you know, so, they, uh, you know, at this stage, I think it's really sort of incumbent on everyone not to go, oh, because he was an addict all over the life. This is what he died of. But the thing about this, the tragic part of it for me that I think will be the truth of it is that whatever happened for him, say it was pulmonary, whatever, he will have compromised himself physically emotionally and then spiritually for so many years um, due to his addictions um, and his sort of sensitivities and all this kind of stuff. So you can't, there's still the hand of addiction in that ending, do you know what I mean? If it was something that kind of was a consequence of just his sort of ill health or ailing health and stuff like that, you know? Um, some people do such, such damage to themselves. And I just think, don't you think his story is all about how difficult fame is as well? Yeah, well, we've got this list of, like, some of Matthew Perry's top quotes, and he said um, there's one in there about fame. Um, well, let's just go through some of them, actually, because okay. there's a good one that comes quite soon about fame. He says there's nothing, these are, uh, there's nothing better than a world where everybody's just trying to make each other laugh. Isn't, mm. that, one, isn't that just wonderful? But also, with that, the pressure of that. Mm. I mean, I've met many comedians over the years, and... Many, many of them are very dark and lonely and sad. 
not leap it, by the way, uh, behind the scenes. So that pressure to make people laugh. And we must get his autobiography. Apparently, it's just heartbreaking. And I think there's a lot of maybe answers in there. I think there was a very difficult situation with his dad. Am I right? Yeah, but there's one of the things that I think is interesting about him as well. I read somewhere how he was forever being told what a comic genius he was. But so I, I was saying, to live up I, to that. And he but, I, but I was saying to Nad after reading that, I think he, and I don't mean this in a rude way, I don't think he necessarily was a comic genius. I think how funny he was was who he was. And because it wasn't, in, for him, a thing of skill or endeavour, or he was good at it. You know what I mean? It's the thing that someone can be very good at something, but they don't see it as a thing in themselves. No. And I think for him, that would have meant nothing. Not in a kind of, oh, taking my life for granted. He, he Like so many people, he struck lucky, he, well, what he landed you find a job, easy, he became comes, famous for it. What comes to you easily will leave you feeling like you have imposter syndrome mm. for being rewarded for it. Um, this is another one of his quotes. Quotes, my favourite six words in recovery are trust God, clean house and help others. So what does that mean, Mark? Clean house and help others? Being of service, isn't it? Is that thing sorry, staying that sober? Question. No, no, I'm just saying because you're the person <laughs> yeah, that's in recovery. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, of course, absolutely. It's keep your side of the street clean, look after yourself. You know, the other thing about the recovering, the, the addict is... It's the analogy of if you're a parent and you're on a flight and the flight starts to go down, you've got to think of yourself first because otherwise you're useless to absolutely everyone. It's that sort of thing of make sure you're surviving, make sure you're safe. On that point, I want to make a really important thing to anyone who's struggling with addiction and struggling with staying sober. Sometimes you have to make really, really serious decisions about people very close to you that you love, that are, you know, really close to you, and there, how closely you keep them in your lives and how much you relate to them in order to preserve your own sobriety. Sometimes those closest to you can be the biggest threat and it's okay. You have to look after you first. You have to do, as they say, whatever it takes to stay sober. Trina Cotton's there has said a number of times that she finds it a bit off that the rest of the Friends cast haven't um, made a comment on social media. But you know what? There is no obligation to do that. It's just become a thing. Can I make a suggestion? You know, if I, if I lost somebody very dear to me, there is no way I'm going on social media on that, day. On that day or on that... I'm not going to go on it before I'm feeling what I'm feeling and going through that. But do you know you what? Know, I, th I think we've... They're probably, they, they'll be totally devastated by I this. think we're in a culture now where, because we can all express how we feel about everything immediately, that if we don't, somehow we're not part of it or feeling it or doing it or mm. on the same page as everyone. I see it differently. I see it as them actually probably all so shocked and mm. in such a mess. I mean, he in one of the um, articles that I was reading, he was saying how Jennifer Aniston once came into his... Um, into his uh, caravan thing, you know, on set, and Trailer. said, "Look, this is this is said with real love, but the alcohol, we we can smell it now. That's mm. a really difficult thing to say to someone. That mm. is real love for a friend to say that." Mm. And he said, "Her and Courtney Cox were complete cardio <laughs> addicts, so they brought him in a bike so that he would like do his cardio exercise. They were so worried about him. Wow. They were always worried about him." Wow. And he said he could never watch Friends back because he would see each series what particular drug he was mm. using. So in the fat series, it was alcohol. In the skinny series, it was, it was. cocaine. Whatever. He said that he was never a partier with these drugs. Mm. His, his idea of a great time was five Vidacone. What is Vidacone? I don't know. No, it's don't an know. American drug. And then Very sit solitary. in by himself and watch, you know, movies. And that was, his, that was the way he used to party. Very solitary. Very, I, I, I'm going to straight after this order his autobiography because I just want to know what what made him, you know, what made him. I mean, tragically, his last post is, is him in, is him, I presume, in the hot tub or certainly a hot tub. I just wanted to read this, this quote, which I thought was funny. The goal is, is, the goal is to have to do the shot again because the camera guy shook a little bit as he was laughing so much. Without that happening, I'm not happy because there's nothing better for me than a world that everybody's just trying to make each other laugh. For him, I love that. It's like mm. nothing better than the crew having a, having a laugh, having a good time mm. too. And I love the way Hank Azari and his thing, his, his post or tribute says how an evening spent with Matthew Perry, he would, he would throw out threads of comedy 
across the night. He wasn't like a gags person, though he was. He had great lines, obviously, in Friends. And he'd throw out the threads and he said across the night, he would just stitch them all together and you'd get to this climactic Genius. kind of moment. I mean, you know, it's just, just what a guy to be around, eh? Um, what's this one? There are two ways to go when you hit that crossroads in your life. There's the bad way when you sort of give up and then there's the really hard way when you fight back. Fighting back is the hardest bit. I went the hard way and came out of it okay. Now I'm sitting here and doing oh great. Oh, God. Mm, there's one in there somewhere about fame as well where Let he talks scroll, about yeah. the only way you can know that it's... He said it was something along the lines of I needed to be famous so as not to chase it all my life. It was something like that. Like, which you just think, God, there's such a hopelessness to that. Mm. Because if he hadn't become famous, he would have thought it was all along the thing he mm. wanted. And then when he became famous, he realised it wasn't, yeah. which is what happens to so many people, isn't it? The thing I'm most oh. proud of... of oh, this is that it. That, that's yeah. The, yeah, that's the quote. The thing that I'm most proud of in my life is that if a stranger came up to me and said, I can't stop drinking, I can't stop drinking, can you help me? I can say, yes, I can help you. And that's what he said he wanted people to talk about after his death. Because you know he opened... Um, a um, rehab for men, just exclusively for men, interestingly. Mm. And um, he gave over his Malibu home, like yeah, 15 right, million yeah. pound home or yeah, something. Said, yeah. And um, I think he ran it for like seven years, but then he said it was the most ridiculous <laughs> property location right, for Malibu. rehab. Yeah. Because I think of this Malibu. This is a great quote. This, and sorry. he said that he just lost so much money. This is a great quote about fame. Listen to this, for anyone who's just fame hungry oh, yeah, for the sake of it. Cool. Now, all these years later, I'm certain that I got famous, so I would not waste That's my it. entire life trying to, to get, get famous. famous. I love that. You have to get famous to know that it's not, not the answer, answer, and nobody who is not famous will ever truly believe that. It's wow. Absolutely brilliant. Wow, that is just like So all boom. those people that think the answer to life is to be famous, wow. I've met very few famous people that think that. I mean, it's proper famous people, not like... That think what? That, that it was the answer to everything. Oh, God. Well, this is the myth. This is the myth. And then you've got this other detail, which is that's why then huge numbers of the sort of civilian population just have no sympathy, because they think if they're famous, they've got nothing to the, that should trouble them. There's another one there. I was the guy who wanted to become famous. There was steam coming out of my ears. I wanted to be famous no. so badly. You want the attention, you want the bucks, and you want the best seat in the restaurant. I didn't think what the repercussions would be. Mm. We find that just going to Nando's. Hmm. Can't sit down and just be private. I learned, uh, that's, is that the play that he did, Mr. Sunshine? Um, oh, God, what I would have done to have seen that. Was it brilliant? Who was it that said they saw it? Oh, God, hmm. with Hank. I it, got sober because I was worried I was going to die next year. Well, you know, and on that, you know, he was so ill. At one point, he had to have a colostomy bag hmm. for a year. He had heart attacks, didn't he? He had a coma. He was in a coma. Hmm. He, um... Yeah, just like unimaginable, the amount of things that his body took. Bidacone is a brand, brand name, name for oxycodone. Oh, the awful, awful yeah. thing that's yeah. killing half of America. Also, a little note here that in his memoir, the opening line in his memoir is, Hi, mm. my name is Matthew, although you may know me by my other, another name. My friends call me Matty and I should be dead. If you like, you can consider what you're about to read to be a message from the beyond, my beyond. I think it's okay. You know, I think this idea that, you know, people want to remember the Friends thing, that's all right. I mean, obviously, he's, he's absolutely renowned, world famous. For it. It's interesting it was only on for 10, I mean, only, it was quite a while, 10 years. But it's still streamed and massive now everywhere, isn't it? I mean, generation after generation comes it's through. It's funny because Bruce Willis's wife put out an impassioned tweet mm. today. And, I, you know, and I, I can hear and feel how she, where she's coming from because also... She's going through so much with her husband, Bruce Willis, isn't he? Mm. And the need for people to have more information. They were in a film together, weren't they? And in this, yeah, they did a film together. And in this tweet, she said, you know, I don't want to hear the emergency call. I don't want to know the toxicology report. I don't want to know this. I don't want to know yeah. that. Let him just rest in peace. And, and and I was like, oh, my God, yes, she's so right. And then I thought again, and I saw these interviews that he's done. He said, I want people to talk about my sobriety. Mm. I want to touch people. Imagine how many people will buy his book. Imagine how many people might take the step out of addiction. Then imagine 
all those people that might get sober that wouldn't have done and how that passes through to all the people that they know and that love them and are suffering with their addiction, maybe their children and their grandchildren, their children's children. That is a legacy. That is a legacy. And that is what he wanted more than anything. And, 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 you know, the, are... and the horrors of fame that he had chased that got him to this terrible place of addiction... In the end, that fame, so where Bruce Willis's wife, though understandably he's come from, is actually wrong because he now wants that fame to push out that message. Yes, I mean, I think one of the major things that I, think, I hope comes out of all of this is don't go just chasing fame for fame, you know, for fame's sake. I mean, fame can happen to you despite, despite you, you know, you don't go looking for it. But I mean, I think, again, it's just a salutary lesson. And I think the saddest part of all of it, and he said this, in fact, I think it was the quote after that you just read about him wanting to be remembered for being able to be the person who said, yes, I can help you. I think straight after that, he says something along the lines of, though I can rarely help myself. You know, mm. it, it, the weird thing is the foot soldiers of recovery is if you've got the language and you can't do it perfectly yourself and you can't perhaps keep yourself sober all the time, you know, the very best you can do, next best you can do is help others. And so when you see someone like Hank Azaria giving his testimony or his, his, his tribute and you think, oh, my God, we've lost one foot soldier to addiction and alcoholism in, in the long term, I'm not suggesting that's how he, the, the acute reason he died, then he saved someone else. It's all those people you've saved. But the important thing about recovery is you've been saved for today. It's today. It's always today. You can't be, you know, pissed off, sad or down. I posted something a couple of days ago about how your 24 hours can start now. You know, if you've picked up whatever your addiction is, you can start your 24 hours now. And the reason that's important, I can remember many times when I was trying to stop drinking, not when I tried to stop, stop, but when I was trying to just, stop and I would pick up or, uh, say a time like a th this time of the day and because it was this time of the day I would feel I may as well, I'm in for a penny and I'm in for a pound and you throw everything under the bus start I'll start again tomorrow. Monday. but the problem that is is you take yourself so low so quickly you can't you wake up and you can't even begin to imagine being able to get through the day again and so you start to park that really dark attractive addiction further down the day it's it's really hard so if you are in a position where you've perhaps just had a drink and you think oh man i wasn't drinking for all of october we're coming to the end of october this is a really important moment the end of october is a key moment for so many people because we are literally what are we 30th today two days away from a lot of people picking up their first drink actually in a month Go mad. and and so many and then we're into christmas and you know so many people who will have stopped for stoptober will have stopped because you kind of on some level know you need to stop for good, maybe. I feel so sorry for him because I feel apparently something else that I was reading, he was saying, what I really, really wanted was to be a family man. I wanted to be a dad. I wanted to be taking the kids to soccer or my children. But but then when you read further into like his relationships, like I was saying to you earlier, wasn't I? He, he reached out to Julia Roberts to be in Friends and she said, okay, as long as you write me an essay on quantum physics. So he wrote it that night and mm. emailed it to her for the morning. Mm. So she agreed to do the job. Then they started to go out together. And after two months, he dumped her. And he said, I will never forget the look on her face. So shocked, you know, mm. this goddess. And I dumped her. And he said, but listen to this. He said, the pain and worry of her leaving me, that she would eventually leave me, was too much. So I finished with her. And you think, God, maybe Julie Roberts would never have finished with you. Yeah. Maybe you two would have been in love. Maybe yeah. you two would have been... And and I think he was engaged a couple of years ago as well. Mm. And, and, yeah, he was with the, his last partner for two years and then they got engaged and seven months later she left him and friends of hers have said, you know, he, it was just too dark. He was just too mm. on mm. the edge of... of it felt like he was always on the edge of picking up a drink again mm. or whatever, relapsing. Mm. And you just think, oh, God, oh, God. I mean, I don't know enough about his childhood or anything, but which, which I want to I mean, there's out, an image, there was wonder... quite a relatively recent image, I think, of him with his father on, 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 on his Instagram, which doesn't mean anything. I mean, oh, he doesn't just, know his father. Yeah, I think, right. I, I mean, which it doesn't mean anything. I mean, you know, the other thing is, is that it's really interesting when we sift through the life of people who've become addicts and what have you, and you are looking for those, where's the trauma? Where's the neglect? Where's the... And sometimes the, the most difficult thing of all is that there isn't any. When it's, somebody doesn't have it. Exactly. Yeah, and what, what you feel, and you talk, you hear it a lot in recovery and in, in 
in various kind of fellowships oh, and, theory and therapy and things like that. You hear a lot of people just saying they felt outside of things. They felt other. They felt like they didn't belong. They felt deeply sensitive, heightened sensitivity. You know, a lot of people who, who end up becoming addicts... Justin Trudeau, Faith yeah, yeah, yeah. says. A, a lot of people who become addicts struggle with heightened levels of sensitivity and anxiety. And it's a pretty understandable thing to do, isn't it? If you're thinking, I've got this and I can't cope with it, what do I do to manage it? You take something, you drink something, you do something to kind of sort of like just <gasps> artificially lessen the kind of fear or the... Or the his mum was Miss Canada. Oh, and right. his father was an actor. Wow. I knew that he was, I knew that just, he went to school, that's right, Did with you Justin Trudeau. Did he was Canadian? No, I didn't either. I didn't know he was fully Canadian. Good I knew God. Was, um, yeah. He, he and his dad were okay. Yeah. Searingly honest shares about sobriety. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Very well. sad. And um, hopefully we did just what Matthew wanted, which was mm. to not talk about friends, but talk about sobriety and the fact that there is a hope. Mm. Um, he was a really good junior tennis player. He was playing pickleball on the day that he yeah. tragically passed away, apparently, for a couple of, a couple of hours before. Mm. I mean, you know, more than likely, he just was... His body had been compromised over the years. He felt bloody awful and, and, and something like that. He did have a cardiac arrest. Or but every, I, I feel there's a hunger... was the face of Old Spice. Do you remember Old oh, Spice? Yeah. I feel there's was a he? hunger. I feel there's a hunger for it to be darker than it must, possibly is. You know what well, I mean? maybe this is why he always referred to his addiction as an allergy. He believed he had mm. a massive allergy. And, you know, often allergy, the thing you're allergic to, you crave the most. It's weird, that. Wow. Can I just read this? Really powerful. Todd Depew, I had no serious trauma in my life. <laughs> Sorry. What's it, Todd? Oh. oh, do you want me to read All it? it took for me to fall into addiction was wanting to belong to him. Sweet sorry, sorry. Okay. No, um, so that's just, just want to say, I mean, to, yeah, that, that, that's just incredibly, whoa, that was like an arrow. Yeah, it can be that much. And what you've just seen there between Todd DePure and, and Mark is exactly what Matthew was talking about. And so when people say, oh, you know, he's dead, why are you talking about the fact that he had addiction? Why are you talking? It's because that is the point. You just saw it happen live there. Somebody else that struggled with addiction said a sentence that touched Mark in exactly the same way and didn't leave him feeling like he was so much of an alien as you can do if you're somebody that deals with addiction and struggles with addiction. You can feel like you're the alien and everybody else, what's it, the earthlings and the aliens. Mm -hmm. And um, you're not an alien. There are, I mean, if you are addicted to alcohol or drugs or anything that the world sees as addiction, um, it's hard because everybody's bloody addicted to something, mm. you know, yeah. it, uh, mostly, honestly, they are. But, but of course, when it's something that is so damaging to your body and to your brain and it's, it's just, it's just very different and it's, and it's very, very hard. And there's, 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 mm. you know, often not enough understanding. It. And as I always say, I still think there's almost zero understanding to people that are addicted to food. But, you know, Matthew Perry swung between food and alcohol and drugs and food mm. and alcohol and drugs. Mm. And he talked about that need to feel like he belonged somewhere. And he also felt like he never belonged. Mm. So, mm. and I think a lot of people can identify with that, even if, you know, whether you're using something or not, whatever that might be. Todd DePew, well done. I'm almost four years sober after 20 plus years. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Just took one person to reach out. After exactly. 20 plus years of being sober and then you've got sober again yeah you? maybe yeah. um because there was a really good quote on that as well from matthew perry he said you know if you if you do relapse yes the date changes but he said that time and that education if that's what you're saying that you were 20 years is still there and it's just a date and it's just about picking yourself back up again and as he said and not dying mm. and that is literally mm. what this is about what the fact that he wanted everybody to keep talking about this was because he didn't want people to die of it. And also, also the other thing I would say to people who you know have many years sober, uh, you know, the the, the 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 amount of time can sometimes become quite an albatross around your neck if you think about all of it. I mean, on the one hand, yes, well, you so look at it. To stay in the day. You look at it and you think, oh wow. But sometimes I can, like, I've had a few moments in the last forty-eight hours where I've been a bit kind of almost sober vertigo, I'd call it, where I kind of look back and I go. 
I've been sober longer than the period of time you have to live, a year longer than the period of time you have to live to legally buy alcohol. And I think, oh my God, and sometimes you can get yourself into a little bit, it's sober vertigo. You sort of look down and you go, oh my God. So sometimes it's best not to look down. It's just best to just look at today. <laughs> and that's really important because for What's me- you saying you inspire them? Oh, bless you. you know, for me, the person who's got sober, say you've just picked up a drink now, the person who's got sober in the next 10 minutes, for the next hour, is that that moment of sobriety is as important as the 19 years sober person who does another hour tonight. It's the same sobriety, it's the same hour of sobriety, it's the same moment at different times for different people, it's the now. Somebody just said that whenever I'm anxious I watch Friends, I think one of our daughters does that as well, and imagine how lovely that is for Matthew Perry, who mm. believed in making the world laugh and suffered so terribly with it. I mean, mm. one of the pills that was by the jacuzzi was anti-anxiety pills. You know, that, that again is such a great legacy, isn't it? If you get comfort. People sometimes say that to us, don't they? That they mm. say, I know Gabby, you said that to us, that, um, that um, watching our channel helps people feel less anxious, which I can't actually understand when you think about it. <laughs> I think but, I'll make people just but, feel anxious. But, but it really is meaningful to us when people say that. It's very, it's a, it's a very, very, that is a beautiful thing if you can mm. help somebody with the horror of anxiety because you can't underestimate how fucking horrible it is for people who live with anxiety. Absolutely, absolutely. Guys. Oh, deep, deep, yeah. deep guys. Yeah. Very deep. Um, We've deeped it, as the teenagers would say. And the great thing is, is, is his legacy and everything he's written and said, and and uh, you know, is going to carry. I mean, so many people are buying his book. So so many people are going to explore it. You know, so many people are going to give it the attention and time that it deserves. And I would I would urge you all to go to Hank Azaria's Instagram and just listen to a really tender tribute from a guy Matthew Perry got sober and who was sober. If only he could have stayed years. sober too. Mm. He said. Mm. All right, guys. Well, look, we'll see you. We will see you on the morning. Thank you for all your lovely messages. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you so Aww. much. <laughs> Thank you, Reese. Um, yeah. So, shall we see them tomorrow? We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.